Okay, here we go. 11 to 20 on this guy or something close to that. F is shown, which is the graph of F prime. Again, two minutes of problem. We'll try to average here. Um, well, the derivative, that means the derivative is zero here and zero here. So at this point and this point, our derivative should, the derivative is zero. So it can't be that guy. Zero here, so it could be that one. Can't be that one. Could be this one. Could be this one. Can't be that one. Uh, where's and then where's the derivative? Um, the derivative, which is a slope. Okay, the slope is very positive, very positive, and then it gets put down to zero. So very positive, very positive gets closer to zero, and then it goes very steep, and it's the biggest negative. It is right there. Oops, in the middle, and then it starts getting, it's still negative, but then it gets back up to zero. Most negative thing it gets, gets back up to zero and then shoots off positive again, so it's B. Okay. Okay. Uh, number 12. Uh, that's a derivative here. Uh, f of x is e to the 2 over x. Um, I would think of this, because I know I'm going to chain rule, I'm going to take the derivative of that, so I'm going to write this like this, e to the oops, 2x to the negative 1. So f prime of x would be e to the 2x to the negative first, and the chain rule is times the derivative of the exponent, negative 2x to the negative second. Looking at my answers and trying to write it like that, it's going to be negative 2 e to the 2 over x over x squared, which looks like this guy right there. Okay, 13, um, f of x is that, what's the derivative of f of the log of x? Well, let's do f of the natural log of x first, is natural log of x squared plus 2 times the natural log of x, and then the derivative of that. So, um, f prime of the natural log of x is the derivative of 2 natural log of x, and then the chain rule times 1 over x, and then the derivative of the second part is 2 times 1 over x. Um, and do I see this on any of these? No, but it looks like if I write it over all over the same denominator, they both have since this is times, that's that, and that's that, right? So it's 2 natural log of x plus 2 all over x. Okay? There you have that. 11. Or page, uh, page 11, problem 14. It's my page 11. Okay. Polynomial. F has such a value second derivative in the table, which must be true. Um, oh, I believe we did this one in class. Um, so these ones, these ones to me are the most time consuming. So we've got zero, one, two, three. shouldn't put dots there, put little marks there. And I know the second derivative of 5 is 5 here, so it's concave up, no concavity, concave down, concave up. Um, okay, so I'm looking at this. Now, the second derivative talks about concavity, so let's first maybe look at the ones the problem that talks about inflection or concavity first, maybe to look at those two first rather than increasing and decreasing. Um, because remember, concavity, it could be concave up and look like that or like that. I, I guess they're both increasing. Uh, so just because I know it's concave up, is it is it guaranteed to be increasing? Could it be concave up and decreasing? I guess it could. There's concave up and decreasing. So just knowing concavity 
doesn't necessarily tell me about increasing and decreasing, so we got to be careful on that. So just because the first derivative, and this is really, I think, what they're trying to get, just because the second derivative is zero, does that mean it's a point of inflection? And the answer is no. To be a point of inflection, the second derivative has to be zero and changes concavity um, on both sides. Well, I know it's zero here, but do I know it's concave up and concave down immediately on both sides? I just know way over here it's concave up and way over here it's concave down. But I don't know that it changes any, you know, what happens in between. It might change concavity several times and be concave up and concave up on both sides, for example. What about E? Does it change concavity somewhere in zero to two? Well, if it's concave up at this, at zero, and concave down here, it has to change from concave up to concave down somewhere in here. Okay, it might not be at that point, but it does somewhere in there. Now here's your example for a function that has a second derivative of zero, where it's not an inflection point, and that would be y equals x to the fourth. Because that's this kind of a fatter, wider parabola looking thing. Second derivative is zero right at the origin but there's no change of concavity at that point, okay? Um, 15, um, integral, let u equal x squared minus four, du is two x dx, put in a two, take out a one half, so this becomes one half, the integral of u, uh, that, du over u, which is one half, natural log has to value of u plus c. So that's one half natural log has to value of x squared minus four plus c. Okay, which looks like that guy right here. Okay. Sixteen. Sine of xy is x, what's dy dx? Um, oh, this is a Take the derivative of both sides, implicit differentiation. Derivative of sine of xy is cosine of xy, and then chain rules times the derivative of the inside. First, derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first equals, derivative, don't forget the derivative of the other side, one. Now, since it asked for dy dx, I have to solve for dy dx. I'm going to divide by cosine x dy dx plus y equals one over cosine of xy. And look at my answers, they all have cosine, so I'm not gonna write that as secant or anything like that. Subtract the y. One over cosine of xy minus y. And then divide by x. If I divide both sides by x, that's the same thing as multiplying by one over x, both sides. And it looks like I've got, these are all one fraction, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, di distribute the one over x out and then combine the fractions. So this is one over x cosine of xy minus y over x. And then to combine the fractions, I gotta multiply this by cosine of xy, top and bottom. So then that becomes one minus y cosine of xy over x cosine of xy. So that looks like something we've got over here. Uh, looks like d. Okay. All right, 17. The graph shown has a horizontal tangent at two and at five g is the integral from 0 to x, so it's going to be an area. What x does g have a point of inflection? Um, let's see. Uh, g, well, what is g prime? Is f of x. And then g double prime 
is f prime of x, and a point of inflection happens when the second derivative is equal to zero, right? Well, that happens when the first derivative is zero. And the first derivative is zero at two. This happens, the candidates, when x is equal to two or x is equal to five. And for that to happen, for it to be a point of inflection, g double prime has to change concavity at those points. Now remember, g double prime is f prime. So what's the sign of g double prime to the left of two? Well, that's f prime, it's positive. Are you with me? Between two and five, g double prime, which is f prime, is negative. And greater than five, the slope f prime, which is g double prime, is positive. Just try to keep those straight. So at 2 it goes from positive to negative, and at 5 it goes from negative to positive, so they're both inflection points, 2 and 5, only. Okay. Alright, next, 18. Um, let's see, x plus y equals k is a line, is tangent to this graph. What's k? Ooh, well if it's tangent, I need to figure out what x and y are. Um, well, y prime is 2x plus 3. That's the tangent. Um, equa that's, a, that's a derivative of my curve. And, but this is my tangent line. y equals negative x plus k. The slope of my tangent line is negative 1. So I'm going to plug that in there. And I will write that slope of tangent line. You don't obviously have to write this down. You're doing it for your sake. So I plug it in over here, and that's going to tell me what x is. Because remember, this is the slope of the tangent line at any x value. I don't know what x is. So I'm working my way backwards. So subtract 3. x equals negative 2. Um, now, now... I'm trying to figure out what k is. I know what x is. I've got to find y. Right? So if I figure out what x and y is, I can plug it into the original equation over here and then get k. Well, if x is negative 2, I can plug it in here and get negative 2 squared plus 3 times negative 2 plus 1. I get 4 minus 6 plus 1. I get negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. So I get negative 2 minus 1 equals k. Negative 3 equals k. Nineteen, horizontal asymptotes. Remember, horizontal asymptotes are where the limit as x approaches infinity of my function. Or the limit as x approaches negative infinity. Because remember, over here, I could have a graph that goes like this. It has two, hor two different horizontal asymptotes. So as x goes to infinity, those don't matter. So this is just going to be 2 to the x over negative 2 to the x. Well, that's a bad way to write it. So let me, let me do this. 2 to the x over negative 2 to the x is just negative 1, which is the limit is negative 1. And so that, that first horizontal line is y equals negative 1. And then the second one, and that's what most students are going to say that, as x goes to negative infinity, um, 2 to the x, well, think about this. As x goes to negative infinity, this is like 2, oops, 1 over 2 to the x, because the negative throws it in the denominator. So then it's 1 over 2 to a huge number, which goes to 0. So both of those go to 0. So this just goes to 5. So y equals negative 1, and y equals 5 would be my two horizontal asymptotes. Okay, does that make sense? Make sure you're clear on that one. And lastly, number 20 for this video f is continuous, or f is a function of second derivative of that, what are the x coordinates of the points of inflection? 
and well, the candidates are when that's equal to zero or undefined, so that'd be when x equals zero, three, or six. So zero, three, or six. And then you just have to look at the number line. F double prime for each of these areas. Well, if it's negative, that's positive, negative, negative, so it's positive. If it's in between here, it's one, say one, positive, negative, negative, which is still positive. Between three and six, like say four, positive, positive, negative. Bigger than six, like ten, positive, positive, positive. So where does it switch concavity? At three, from positive to negative, and at six from negative to positive. So three and six. Be my inflection points. Okay, there is that video. You're good.